Hello and welcome to the Bang Picks video for the New Mexico Bowl featuring BYU against SMU. I'm your host, Matthew Amato for Lamps.com. Joined here by Jason Gilbo, Jacob Wayne. We have a five and a half point spread in favor of Southern Methodist University, 64 and a half point over under. Before we jump into this game, let's take a look at the college football bowl game page on Lamps.com. Updated by your very own Jacob Wayne. He's going to be letting you know the opt-outs, transfer portals, and injury news for all of these bowl games. So check out this page while you're watching this video to make sure you're getting the most up-to-date information as we record them a little bit earlier. A lot going on here. Rasheed Rice opting out for SMU, which I'm kind of disappointed. I was excited to see him. But the big one is obviously Jaron Hall's injury and BYU being maybe onto their third string quarterback. Jacob, I'll let you speak to that a little bit more. And if you got a pick for this one, go ahead and give it. Yeah, I mean, there's been pretty aggressive line movement towards uh, SMU in this game. And there's only one reason that that would be the case, and it's that there's inside information that Jaron Hall is not going to play. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be true. We saw that with Grayson McCall in the Coastal game, where there's pretty aggressive line movement towards Troy. And then... Uh, McCall ended up playing, which obviously didn't matter. They, they covered anyways. But uh, just just to say that Jaron Hall might still end up playing in this game, I'm sure he wants to. The quotes are definitely seem like he wants to play in this game. And he should be able to pick apart this SMU secondary if he plays. Um, they're in 98th in coverage. And, I mean, some of their defensive showings this year have just been awful. Uh, but the issue is Jacob Conover, who was their backup, um, relieved him against Stanford, entered the transfer portal. So they're, they might be down to their third string quarterback here. And then, like you said, with Rasheed Rice out for SMU, I mean, he was a bulk of their offense. Um, 96 catches for 130, or sorry, 1,355 yards and 10 touchdowns. Um, their second leading receiver has 31 catches this year. So without Rasheed Rice, definitely impacts their ability to be explosive through the air. Uh, Tanner Mordecai still, still should have an advantage against this BYU secondary. But, you know, like I said, like these offenses are both going to be rather limited if those guys are out. So... Uh, definitely not going to be as exciting um, of, of a game as we were potentially going to get. The over-under was at 68 originally, and I was going to think about playing the over, honestly, if Rishi Rice and Darren Hall were playing. But at this point, I think it's difficult to make a lean either way on the total. I have a lot to say here. Um, Jason, if you let, will let me sit on my soapbox for a second. Last year, we did all these videos. If you remember a certain... Two individuals were very heavily on BYU against UAB in the Independence Bowl. And we were feeling very confident. And then all of a sudden, two hours before the game, with Jaron Hall practicing all week, they announced that Baylor Romney was going to be the quarterback and Jaron Hall was out of the game. And I'm never going to forgive BYU or Jaron Hall for that. So I have no confidence that Jaron Hall is going to play. Obviously, the dude doesn't like playing through any kind of pain. And on top of that... Every time I've looked to back BYU this season, I have been massively disappointed. And you know what the issue is? BYU is a terrible football team this year. Like, I'm on SMU at minus 5.5. I will bet them up until it's a full, or a, a full touchdown spread. I don't care if Jaron Hall's playing. I don't think he will. But even if he was, I think this high-powered SMU offense is going to put up quite a few points. I don't think BYU has any chance of keeping up. I really don't. I don't care how bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm choking here on my soapbox. SMU's defense is, I don't think BYU's going to be able to keep up, and they just haven't showed me anything all year that would lead me to believe that they are going to be competitive in this game. Again, uh, this is a little bit of scarring from last year. That's not good betting advice, but at the same time, I'm willing to place this full unit on SMU, and seeing this team continue the offensive performance that they have been showing out with. So, Jason, your turn. Yeah, this, that's exactly what I was going to say. It was was this BYU team the same that destroyed us last year? And um, latest news, I mean, Hall hasn't practiced at all. Um, and, and Coach has said that, you know, he's not really at the point that he's wanted to see him at. Like we said, we don't really know what that necessarily does mean. Um, looking at this one, like I initially wanted to look at the under, um, you know, just with all the stuff that is in play, just because when you do take Rasheed Rice out, like that is a big part of the SMU offense, um, and they are a little bit thin at wide receiver after him. Um, and then on BYU side, you, you do kind of put the quarterback limbo in this situation, and I think, oh, there might be some kind of just issues with them moving the ball. But then you look at these defenses, and you just kind of go, man, I, I still don't know, like they could still put up points in this spot. So, like, I don't really like a strong lean on the total either way as well. Um, 
because SMU is really one of the worst tackling teams in the country. They're 128th in rush EPA, EPA as well. Like BYU could also run the ball and kind of control this game if they wanted to, so I do think that's still in play. Um, BYU ranked 11th in yards per attempt this season, so I still think there is a path for BYU's offense to move the ball in this spot. Um, I don't have a strong play. I was initially wanting to go with BYU uh, plus five and a half, just because I do think BYU's offense can put up points on this defense, you know, kind of regardless of the situations. And then hoping that SMU offensively can kind of have some troubles, maybe spiraling out of the gates, just because their wide receivers will need to kind of get involved a little bit more as the game goes on. Um, so first half under might be potentially in play here, but I, there's just nothing here defensively, you know, that gives me any reason to back these two teams for an under. So that's really the problem. So. Yeah, I don't really got anything for this one. Yeah, I, I do want to make it clear. Um, I would be a lot more confident if Rasheed Rice was playing. Um, and it, it doesn't, it, it's not a great thing. I, again, I still think SMU takes this one by a touchdown plus. I also feel like I'm a little bit more comfortable with the larger spread because I personally think it is going to eventually spiral out of control, uh, the scoring that is, and it's going to be a pretty high scoring game that gets past that 64 and a half total. Um, where it's kind of touchdowns back and forth, where it's not going to end up a field goal game. It's going to be who gets kind of like that last touchdown. But with all that said, um, I do want to say, like, I am less confident in a lot of these bowl games because of the opt-outs, because of the injuries. But in this one, I, I still, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat the five and a half points. Um, that was, we could have got it at a better spread when it came out, but we're recording the video now, so I'm willing to take it. Jacob, any more bets you want to talk about? Yeah, I'm kind of waiting to see where this ends up landing on the spread because if it gets if it gets all the way to seven, I'm gonna play BYU. Um, I think if they get any sort of competent quarterback play, which I mean it's hard to really speculate on, but if they get any kind of competent quarterback play, I think they're gonna be able to keep this thing close. Um, their defense did improve towards towards the end of the year. Uh, head coach Kalani Sataki took over play calling duties, and they ranked top forty against explosive plays. And SMU's offense gets frustrated when they can't get explosive plays through the air. And I think the absence of Rasheed Rice definitely limits their ability to do that. So I look at BYU and their offensive line uh, ranks 14th in run blocking on PFF, um, headlined by Clark Arrington and Blake Freeland, the latter of whom is going to be potential NFL starting caliber player, um, 27th in average line yards. And SMU kind of gets bulldozed in the run game sometimes, 123rd in rushing EPA on defense, 113th on uh, stuff, stuff rate. So overall, I do, I do think BYU can run the ball here. Christopher Brooks will lead the way there, but they have a full rotation of running backs. Puka Nakua can kind of make plays from anywhere. And yeah, I, I just think they can hang around here. And the other thing to note that I wrote down is Rhett Lashley talked about how um, he's kind of distracted right now with this is his first bowl game as a coach. He was talking about managing the transfer portal, Texas high school football recruiting, and just it seems like there's a lot going on for this program right now. So I don't know. I, I I don't love him as a head coach. Obviously, Sonny Dykes was their head coach, and he's off to TCU where he's, he's been amazing. And I'm not fully confident in their ability to be completely prepared for this game without their best offensive weapon. So it's going to be about BYU or pass for me at the current number. Um, I'm going to wait and see how far it goes, but I think there might be some value here on the underdog. Very fair. Jason, any last thoughts? No, I think Jacob kind of you know capped off my comments of where I was potentially going to go. If, I mean, if this this line does like, does move above six, like I'll look at BYU for sure, because um, that's it's a decent number that where I'm already kind of trying to lean, and if it can get there, that'll push my my mind over. Fair. And the last thoughts for me is what's really sticking out in my head is I watched the Stanford BYU game, um, and while BYU ran over ran all over Stanford, which obviously is a concern, I, I believe they ran for like 400 yards, 358 yards. The one key in that game that makes me feel kind of confident in this SMU team without Rasheed Rice and, and them just going to town on BYU is Tanner McKee's performance. Now, I, I think Tanner McKee's a really good quarterback, but 31 for 40, 313 yards of TD. It's just ridiculous. Like, it's not only that Tanner McKee was efficient, there was no pressure by BYU. Everybody was wide open the entire game, so... For me, it's just kind of like if SMU just can get a stop in this one, I really do think they cover. But I, I also agree with your guys' points where if it gets up to 7, 100% a no bet for me. And if you're getting over 7, it, it starts to become a value on the BYU side because it's just too big at that number. All right. 
Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you like this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button to get more great content like this. Check out the College Football Bowl game page on lineups.com. Again, Jacob will have that up to date. You can find a link in the description. And in case there's any more injury news, transfer news, or opt-out news, you can find it right there. We will see you for the next one very soon.